Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome. Today's lecture preliminary hazard analysis. The content a preliminary hazard analysis. Actually, we will discuss only PHA preliminary hazard analysis. So, under this, these are the these are the few things which are part of PHA, one is overview, then what is the methodology, the worksheets you require to represent the PHA, document PHA and then risk index, hazard control hierarchy, some examples will be given to you. Obviously, the same book, hazard analysis techniques for system safety, please keep in mind those who are first going through PHA without PHL, without PHL preliminary hazard list, my previous lecture, preliminary hazard list, you will face problem. So, I request all of you first go through PHL, if not gone through and then understand PHA. This PHL and PHA, they are basically very much related thing. PHL is the input to PHA. So, let us see that you see I told you, I, I, if you if you recall that in PHL also this kind of process diagram I have given and in PHA also it is given and in PHL I, we have given that design knowledge then hazard knowledge and then lessons learned, but in PHA design knowledge, hazard knowledge, PHL is the input preliminary hazard list and this is top level mishaps, top level mishaps. Okay. So, if we consider the S missile system, the example what I have given earlier they are one of the top level mishap is missile structure that, that crash. So, similarly the uh, that is during launch then flight, similarly the fire in the ground operation missile structure that fire. So, <coughs> so in the same manner if we go back uh, look into the example of pressure tank the top level mishap will be pressure tank rupture. Okay. So, these are basically top level mishaps. So, top level mishaps are inputs to PHA. What are the outputs? Hazards that you have already also seen in PHL, then accident you have seen in PHL also, causal sources that also you have seen there, that safety critical functions and top level mishaps that is what is basically input here, output here, but we have not discussed uh, the details. Then mitigation methods and some that safety reviews. So, all those things are the output and how do you do this PHA process? List and evaluate each PHL TLM for hazards. You have PHL 1, PHL 2 like this in SMS solution there are 50 PHL preliminary hazards. So, every PHL there will be some top events, top level mishaps. So, you have to list all them. Then you find out if there is any new hazards. Then evaluate hazards through thoroughly as design details allows and document the process. So, that means it is intertwined with the PHL. The PHL process and PHA process they are they are they are basically overlap to one, but PHL will help you in doing PHA in a better manner. 
So sometimes what happen? We don't do PHL. We will do PHA starting from the first step of PHL and end end of PHA. Okay. So you just see the steps. Define systems. You have seen in PHL. Plan similar to PHA. Establish safety criteria. It was not there. Identify acceptable safety design criteria, safety per per principle, safety guideline, and safety critical factors. So that you have to establish. Then you acquire data, and I have told you what is this acquire data. For a, okay, obviously you are saying that safety design criteria like safety factors. Okay, so safety perception, safety principles. So Uh, so uh, the pol uh, different uh, there can be many principles uh, many uh, companies followed 10 to 15 principles okay inspection is one principle hira is another principle like many things there are safety guidelines and obviously safety critical factors related to human wear software hardware and the uh, interface all those things will take place here acquire data fine that that you understand and conduct pha see construct list of equipment function it is like phl prepare worksheet for each identified equipment item like phl compare hardware with hazard checklist tlm phl compare system operational function with work hazard checklist tlm so operational function hardware energy sources then software function all you compare these already you have seen in phl but okay suppose you have not gone through phl you want to do jointly so then all those steps you have to follow and i i request all of you to first see the my phl lecture preliminary hazard list lecture then follow this one expand the list of safety critical factors or tlm and utilize in the analysis in phl you found out the safety critical factors and top level mishaps but here you expand the list be cognizant of functional relationship timing concurrent function i have already told you that dependency between components between one layer to another layer now utilize hazard and mishap lessons learned from other systems then few things which are basically new what is not there in phl evaluate risk i told you risk is probability times consequence this principle will be using here for every phl every hazard then recommend corrective actions so what you want you want to you want to do some thing so that the risk will be minimized so they are that's why i have i have kept one uh, uh, concept in the lecture that is uh, hazard control hierarchy hazard control control hierarchy so you have to once you evaluate risk and if it is unacceptable suppose okay whatever may be the level of risk you want to reduce it then you require to give some actions to take some actions to give some suggestions so some control measures so using hazard control hierarchy you can get some control measures then monitor corrective actions review test results and ensure that the safety recommendation and ssr are effective in mitigating hazards as anticipated this is basically once you improve it must be monitor and maintain then track hazards whether the hazards are still occurring or not transfer newly identified hazard into uh, into the hit update the hazard uh, top um, and um, okay so what i mean to say that that if you have any identify new identified hazards you just feed into the list then document the entire pha process and pha worksheets in the pha report include conclusion and recommendations so these are these are guidelines so how to do pha so what i told obviously these are descriptive 
so once you read further you will know that what are the things are there but please follow these steps that is what is the issue here then when you try to document the documentation is having how many components 14 components first is system subsystem function likhna padega what is the system what subsystem then who is the analyst who is date these are the minimum basics then number it will come from 1 2 3 suppose system number then suppose hardware number item 1 what are the different hazards hazard 1 what are the causes of that hazard 1 then what are the effects of hazard 1 what mood means when it has occurred maybe uh, is it during the operation or during the maintenance or maybe during in case of SMSL case during flight during ground operation where it is or in case of the material handling system in a, in a steel plant where it has occurred during when the a torpedo on the track going to ladle or basically it is the UT crane transferring the ladle. So, where it is? So, that sense IMRI, IMRI stands for initial mishap risk index. So, that, so that means you have to know the hazard what is the probability of occurring and what is its consequence then that multiplication of this p and c will give you initial hazard mishap risk index then what happened here you want to reduce this risk then either you reduce the probability of occurring or consequence of that event or both then that recommendation may be related to prevention related to mitigation when you are you are basically giving recommendation to reduce the probability that the hazard will not hazard will not occur or probability of reducing hazard occurrences that is the prevention when you are thinking okay hazard occur but its its consequence can be mitigated then it is basically mitigation so it can be both so then you find out the preventive measures mitigative measures then you put here and then what will happen if both preventive and mitigative measures found out then this both p and c value here it will be reduced i'll show you with one example how it is done and then you have to give the comment comment means whether that is implemented recommendation implemented or not or what is the feasibility cost component all that uh, those, those things you can write and and under status you write the implementation status if it is implemented closed if it is not implemented open under comment you can write many things whatever you fit find relevant so in phl we have given a very small uh, documentation items i think 5 6 but in pha 14 items to par hazard you have to write down up four i four items are common 5 to 14 then hazard specific information you have to give so now um, now the issue is that how do i find out the initial miss every index or risk index there are many ways to find out risk index but here uh, a subjective or qualitative way of risk index calculation is there. Severity is the part of consequence, probability p probability. As we have told that risk equal to p into c. So, now finally, that can this can be once you know the probability in the quantitative term and consequence or severity in the quantitative term then risk will also be in the quantitative term. So, that is quantified risk which is basically objective in nature then it is quantitative risk assessment. This the scheme adopted in PHA is usually qualitative risk assessment not quantitative risk assessment because quantitative risk assessment requires data of probability and consequence values and that too for every top level accidents or every hazard you have to find out 
then it will be a huge task. And as PHA is done usually at the system level, when encompassing all the component system subsystem to, to get an idea first that what is the hazards hazard level, when what are the different kinds of hazards available in the system. So, that a exhaustive list of hazard can be found out. So, then when they are uh, they are uh, index risk value may be given in a qualitative term. By qualitative term what do we mean is given here. Severity can be have can have four different categories catastrophic, critical, marginal, negligible. For example, we may say if there is a fatality suppose one or more fatality that may be catastrophic or sometimes people say no it may it is catastrophic if even not one more than one fatality is there, but okay fatality is a big issue. Critical we can say okay from human safety point of view from human safety point of view critical may be permanent permanent loss of body parts okay imputation may be your eye or something like this. Marginal which is which may not be leading to any kind of um, the disability, but it is making may be uh, absent from work absent from work. Negligible means may be first aid kind of thing first aid. So, but you may say that no my system is such that it is not the human safety only it is a loss control point of view that human property environment all will be important then what you have to do you have to you may find out the equivalent equivalent that law uh, quantification or loss in terms of money ok. So, may be human say loss then your property loss environment loss all loss you com compute and then find out your categorization of catastrophic critical marginal like this. For example, if a accident can cause suppose or rupees 1 lakh or more 1 lakh or more 1 lakh means basically um, or, uh, or if we say 1 million uh, uh, Indian rupees then it may say it is catastrophic, but negligible uh, if it is the ultimate loss is 1000 rupees Indian rupees. So, that conversion is also possible. But if you can make in terms of money, then it is quantitative. So, what I mean to say qualitative mean you have you must have an idea that your loss value beyond certain level is catastrophic, within certain level is critical, within certain level is marginal, within certain level negligible. Usually from severity in terms of human safety is considered. So, that means this is a four point four point scale for severity. Similarly, probability it, it can be quantitative can be qualitative, qualitative mean frequent suppose uh, the work has been done a hundred times, ten times it has uh, that incident is occurring. So, that is frequent. Probable may be if I say that okay, four times or uh, four to five times probable out of hundred, occasional may be 2 to 3 and remote may be 1 to 2 improbable less than 1. So, something like this, but at the qualitatively you please understand that uh, there is no in qualitative risk assessment for the severity scale as well as probability scale there is there is no reference point ok. It is basically used for ranking purpose. So, for my own system for considering all hazards if I if I stick to this then when I compare first risk fall with the second hazard risk then what will happen it will the, the difference ultimately um, is significant not the individual value difference will be significant therefore, for improving the uh, for, for ranking. But from improvement point of view if catastrophic severity is there it is to be reduced definitely otherwise do not do this work, but that mean if your th this one cannot be reduced then it should be e improbable. The p principle is like this if I say this is my probability and this is my severity 
then if I say this is high and this is low, then this is high and this is low, then high probability high severity, high probability high severity means catastrophic and frequent impossible this this quadrant big 0 it is impossible. If your system is having this that means this is not a working uh, cannot people cannot work here. Then here probability is low severity is high it may be there. So, that means what happened probability low severity high. So, your severity must be reduced your prevention measure will be severity oriented here. Now, probability severity both low low this is the most desirable one and you find out that in in, in general um, day to day all activities will fall under this and here probability high and severity low that may be there here what happened you reduce the probability. So, action here I think it is inoperable system action here reduce the catastrophic nature or the severity action here reduce the probability action here I think it will the risk level here fall under acceptable zone. So, so that means what happened for every hazard suppose PHL 1 you know what is the hazard now you have to see that what is the probability that it will happen. So, you may say it is remote then probability value is D. If it happen what is the consequence you say it is catastrophic then it is 1 D this is my initial initial risk index in this manner in PHA risk index is written. For the second hazard suppose PHL 2 so you may say for example here PHL 1 the missile body that uh, that uh, crash the catastrophic but it may be remote possibility suppose the second one that the when the uh, I can say the tank rupture that also will be catastrophic but its probability is again remote or improbable maybe may the when the material handling uh, the torpedo is going so if there is there is the there is a fracture uh, rupture in the torpedo what will happen it will again it may again lead to catastrophic and but it can it may be improbable okay suppose you just think of that somebody is carrying something so there is a possibility of slip and fall it may be occasional yeah, it may be occasional so slip trip and fall that may be C occasional, but if you go by the consequence it may be marginal. So, then the IMRI is 3 C here you may be interested to reduce this one ok in this manner initial risk index is computed. Once you have the risk index then what is the next? Next is how to reduce the risk. So, here is the concept called hazard control hierarchy, hazard control hierarchy. So, for I know junior Hadden, Hadden has given this that means that elimination, substitution, engineering control, then administrative control, personal patrol, these are the five stages. Elimination means eliminate the hazard during design that is the concept of PTT that during design before designing in the, at the design room if you understand if you have done PHA then all the hazards are known consider one hazard and then see that whether this hazard can be removed at the design stage if it is remove it. Now, that is what we say that elimination for example, working at height if the work can be done at the ground floor to so get it done there even though you know working at height if you do at, at the height it will be better from the efficiency point of view, but from safety point of view it is not. So, elimination is there 
if you cannot eliminate substitute a less hazardous material or form during design please keep in mind during design so okay it is not elimination not possible working at right cannot be eliminated totally some cases it will be there but please understand that suppose the make the maintenance person he required to carry such material so can it be eliminated so the load part can be eliminated so that mean that little less okay sorry substitution for example the pressure tank system you are suppose the instead of gas you are using toxic gas so the toxic gas is the hazard now if the for the operation point of view for the pneumatic control machines what the gas will be used who will be used where the gas will be used here if it requires ordinary gas then what happen instead of toxic gas you are using ordinary gas but you are using toxic gas because toxic gas may be available which is produced by your system for example in steel plant what happened coke oven gas ld gas blast furnace gas they are all toxic gases particularly coke oven gases so these are these are plenty of uh, such gases available so in in another place where you want to uh, suppose pressurize something use those gas but please keep in mind if instead of that coke gas coke oven gas some other less toxic gas or no toxic gas available it is better to use this is the case of substitution then engineering control design in engineering control engineering control basically what do you mean by that you are you are not able to eliminate the hazard or substitute the hazard you have to you have to work with the hazard now from energy control point of view air with the hazard means suppose the pressure tank the pressure gas you will be using so that mean you must have some control so that the over pressure condition will not occur okay so over pressure condition will not occur provided some mechanisms are put let it be you have seen already pressure gauge is there alarm is there so relief valve is there they are basically for what purpose to to avoid the over pressure condition so these are all engineering controls now elimination substitution and engineering control later on we will be discussing in detail uh, when we discuss that safety function deployment i'll discuss in detail how it will be done but for the time you understand these three are basically considered the ptd prevention through design whatever ptd you adopt all administrative control is also you must so for every hazard what you identify for some may be ptd related solution somewhere administrative solution is also related so those you will find out so well designed work methods and organization is administrative control safe sop must be available sop must be adequate sop must be followed all those things how do you know is administrative control only can do it then last but not the least pp is also important because occurrence of hazard is a probabilistic event whatever you do there is a chance so ppv must be used it's basically least effective but it is a must so reliability of control if you see the elimination is the best method pp is the worst method but this lower reliability to higher reliability so your order of execution should be rank 1 rank 2 rank 3 rank 4 rank 5 your execution order will be like this first this that's the reliability pattern is okay i hope that make this make sense now let us see that the documentation part with an example what is our example as missile system then pha1 you have already seen that missile structure fails resulting in unstable mission flight and missile crash causes manufacturing defect design error effect unstable flight resulting in crash during death like this this is basically this hazard and effects and initiating mechanism this is the total hazard list this is the first hazard and these are the, this is the hazard triangle basically then where which mode it is in the flight mode what is the initiating initial miscible index 
catastrophic in nature remote occurrence. So, what is the recommended action? Use 5 times safety factor on structural design. Then what will happen? D will be converted to E. So, D is probability, E is also probability, improbable it is remote. So, that means prevention, it is a prevention, comment basically this action if you take then what will happen? Probability final risk may have risk and this fMRI final mishap risk index. Open means it is not yet done. Similarly, other one. Okay. So, what we have learned then? We have learned then that PHL and PHA one actually PHL and PHL are overlapped, PHL is the input to PHA. So, when you do PHA you must have PHL the list must be available. So, and the process is given to you. Second thing is that in the hazard list you will find out so many, so many hazards PHL 1, 2. So, like this there will be PHL n so many hazards are there. So, the format is given in that format you have to write down the causes, the hazard, the causes, the effects, initial risk index, then recommended action, then final risk index and so forth. Okay. So, I have given you only that is missile example here, but the uh, the material hot metal transfer case also similar things we have prepared. Uh, your pressure tank system you can prepare, you have your own system there also you can prepare. So, in between some cases will be discussed there also you will see uh, further development. So, in nutshell PHA which is which includes PHL also is a very effective hazard identification technique which can be used at the design stage. Okay. It is applicable to the entire system and the primary purpose is here to find out all purpose whatever the different level of hazards available there. Okay. So, maybe PHL can give you a very big list of hazards. Okay. So, then what happened through risk analysis and other measures you may finally come down to a few uh, risk or hazards which require maybe further analysis. So, this is known as this can be understood in, in Six Sigma terminology this is funneling effect. So, we have large number of hazards and then we want to find out the very few significant one. So, that means there may be vital few hazards and trivial many. So, what happened, but PHL ultimately work at this level when we want to find out more because it is it is basically at the system level, planet level, department level it can be done. But whatever you do, you please keep in mind that a team is required, team is required. Your design knowledge, system knowledge, the design knowledge, hazard knowledge and lessons learned, these are very, very important. Your design logic will be compared with hazard knowledge, design will be compared with lesson learned, then the design gap will be identified and new hazards will be identified also. Second is that the system breakdown structure, system breakdown which I have discussed in PHL lecture. So, that means system there will be hardware, there will be humanware, there will be software and system can be broken down to subsystem, sub subsystem to component level. So, you can you can at the component level that means the hardware item every item you have to find out then the energy sources and hazardous processes and events you have to understand 
and accordingly you have to find out that what kind of hazard can be there. My in, in the conceptual lectures I, I have talked about hazard triangle, it is nothing but PHL will give you many hazard triangle and PHA will give you how many hazard triangle are, uh, and what is the re amount risk and what kind of actions can be taken so that that risk can be minimized. You have, we have discussed in the qualitative way the risk, qualitative risk that mean P in 4 uh, may be 5 point and, four and, and C in 4 points. So, you have in total that mean you have in total that A, B, C, D and E then 1, 2, 3, 4. So, how many risk value? So, that mean you in your case there will be 20 risk values. So, this one is 1 A and this one is 1 E similarly this one is 4t so the higher the this is this is the higher the consequence and the higher the uh, probability that is that is the worst thing so that mean in the first few quadrant like like this all those things these are very very serious one maybe here also this this should not be this should not be there we we must avoid this similarly maybe you will find out that two this and this, this may be not, may be only 4, okay, this fourth case, this may be acceptable case. So, if your original uh, risk is falling here, that 1, uh, 1 E, so you please see that it may be acceptable, but if it is 1 D, it may not be acceptable. In that case, this D must be converted to E and your recommended actions will be how to convert this probability of occurrence reduce this from D to E that there the hazard control hierarchy will play a role. But please keep in mind here hazard control all those things we are talking at the very abstraction level. The nitty gritty detail if I say elimination of hazard or substitution of hazard or engineering control we are give, we are giving you here in, in, in broad based engineering control not the specific engineering control. The specificity comes when you actually design in uh, design and you have the design knowledge you know the everything then automatically because of your the team's knowledge this concept once you apply the specific items you will find out from hazard control point of view. So, wonderful technique very easy and very easy to pack, uh, understand but very difficult to do in reality because domain knowledge hazard knowledge design knowledge lessons all those things are prerequisite for doing PHA. Okay. I hope that you have understood it and you will definitely be able to develop case because what will happen when we give when we give you the assignment we will be looking for such uh, a case specific assignment from your side also. Okay. Thank you very much.